G'day, I'm Scotty Tucker. In this video, I'm gonna step you through uh, how to actually flock a dam. So you should have already watched the jar testing uh, flocking video that'll help you decide how much product you, you're gonna to come to or arrive at. For this one, we figured out that we need about 20 litres. So we're gonna dilute it about five to one. You can go up to sort of 10 to one. The dilution is more about making sure you've got enough product to distribute over the dam. It's no good diluting the product with, you know, one to one if you need 20 litres and, you know, you, you spray it out and you run out of spray um, halfway through your job because this has to, the, the, the product, the flocculant, has to actually contact the dirt particles in the water. So you need to get an even spray all over it. Uh, also, if, uh, if you've got something to mix it around, an aerator, uh, pump, anything like that, that's a good idea that you may need to mix it around temporarily. And then once you see flock formation or activity happening, then you shut off your mixers and, and let it drop and let it settle. Now, this is a small dam. This is actually our test dam. Those of you that watch some of our weed can control videos would have seen this dam when we first cleaned it out. Uh, you can see the weeds already coming back. It's absolutely relentless, the Kambungian spike rush. Uh, but this is a small dam, so we're gonna do it from shore. And you can also do this same process in a larger dam, but you would have your spray equipment on the boat. And in a lot of times, cases, what you would do is just run your sprayer behind the boat motor and let the boat motor uh, mix it up and just whiz around the dam uh, in your boat. Just do some donuts or whatever you need to do to, um, to, to mix it around and get it even. But the idea is we wanna get it even dispersed across the surface of the water. You can't just pour it into the corner and allow the wind to drag it across. You've got to actually spray it. Uh, and there's a couple of different um, sort of spray consistencies that you can use. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. We've selected the, uh, this type of sprayer because it's a relatively small one, but there are also some other size sprayers that, uh, that you can use. But yeah, let's get into it and um, give it a spray. All right, so now it's just a case of um Spreading out as, uh, as best I can over the surface area. I'll see how it behaves and then see if I want to um, turn the aerator on to mix it in a little bit more. So the type of consistency you want to get is something like this. This is sort of as fine as you want to get. This is a bit of a spray. There's a little bit of misting coming off. But uh, yeah, that's a, sort of on the finer end of, um, of what you want to be doing. This would be quite good behind the boat motor. Now this is the other type of uh, spray consistency that is it's probably a bit, bit on the sort of um, upper end. You can see it's creating a few waves. It's sort of, kind of like a rain droplet type of effect. This is the effect that we're gonna to use today because there's a little bit of wind. You don't wanna do it when it's too windy, but there's a little bit of wind. And what we're gonna do is um, use a heavier sort of droplet so that I can stand up the top of the hill, use the hill, let the wind um, disperse some of it across the surface. But also it means that we're just getting a larger spread or a reach, which means that we don't have to move the tank around very often, if at all. Now, after you've been spraying for a while, you'll notice some different uh, activity happening in the water where the flock's starting to form. You can see like little streaks and clumps and that's just a good sign that uh, that the process is working so we just uh, keep going to the uh, the dose calculated or you may also just look at um, the flock formation because you don't want to overdose if you overdose the product doesn't work as well so you're kind of aiming for a fluffy fluffy flock around sort of pin head to match head size if you reach that point then you're better off to um, uh, shut off and, and let it settle. Now I'm starting to see some sizable flock particles and uh, we've come to the end of how much product we'd calculated for so I think what we're going to do now is just pull up. So this is a very shallow dam, uh, it's only about waist deep but uh, it's got a solar aerator in there that we're testing so I might just turn that on for a little while and just help mix some product around. Uh, I don't want to turn it on for too long though because it's so shallow it might actually stir up the bottom and um, uh, do more harm than good, but I'll um, we'll just fire it up for a little bit and um, give it a go. I don't know if you can get this on camera, but uh, the aerator is actually doing a good job of mixing it. You can see different sort of swirls and it's almost like a chocolate bar with a swirl through it. So we'll keep that aerator going for a bit longer. It's um, doing well. A few hours later, you can start seeing the water starting to clear up around the edges. 
So hopefully overnight it drops and um, we come back to a clear dam. This product that we use is non-toxic, so animals can drink out of it straight away. Dog's happy with it. Taddies are still um, floating around, swimming around. Now here we are 24 hours later, and you can see we've actually had a, a pretty good result with this, uh, with this flock. So yeah, you can see the dam sort of a more natural greeny olive sort of tinge to it. Um, we're not aiming for a swimming pool type of look. Uh, we're just wanting a more natural look just to drop the mud out and that's exactly what we've done now. So uh, overall it was uh, quite a successful result. And this may clear a little bit more in, um, in coming days. Now, one thing uh, that's a key with this type of process is you can see the banks behind me are still bare earth. In practice, so this one's our test stand. The reason we're flocking it is that we're actually going to line it and do a, uh, another video. But um, in typical situations, before you flock, what you want to do is first of all, make sure that all of the, the perimeter is, uh, is, is, is secure in terms of there's not going to be loose dirt coming in. So you don't want to have runoff bringing in new material. You don't want to have wind and wave action battering up against the banks. You also don't want to have uh, excessive numbers of yabbies, carp, anything like that that's going to stir up and, and um, uh, resuspend dirt particles into the water and effectively make what you've just done now, uh, not useless, but short-lived. So fix up the reasons why the, the dam is muddy in the first place before you flock and then go in and flock so that um, you know, you're not um, having the problem coming back again in, in short term.